Imagine taking an oath as a medical doctor to serve the suffering, only to give out medical advice that is going to get people killed. That's what we're dealing with today on Debunk the Funk. Hello and welcome to Debunk the Funk. I'm Dr. Wilson, and today's funky stuff is brought to you by PragerU, a YouTube channel that isn't exactly known for giving out accurate information. And a week ago, they uploaded a video spreading all sorts of coronavirus misinformation, which at the height of the coronavirus pandemic in the U.S., where the U.S. is seeing upwards of 70,000 new cases every single day, that's just not acceptable. Even more unacceptable, this information is being spread by a medical doctor. Let's listen to him and see exactly why he should be ashamed of himself. What a healthy society should do, and this is what we've done historically in the past, we should protect the most vulnerable, older folks, nursing home patients, extended care facilities, and those with significant pre-existing conditions. So we should protect them. I agree. And the best way to do that right now is to treat yourself as if you are already carrying the virus. So wear a face mask, social distance, and frequently wash your hands. But the rest of us, the young and the healthy, we should go about our business. Uh, no, we should all be taking precautions. The more young people who have the virus and are able to transmit it to those who are vulnerable, the more at risk the vulnerable are. You're not protecting people that way. There was never an expectation that we were going to prevent people from getting COVID-19. Well, uh, actually, that was the goal all along. In lockdown, the idea was not only to flatten the curve, but also to implement widespread testing so that we could do things like contact tracing and individual quarantining. That way, things could open back up and people could be quarantined as needed. Instead, the U.S. still doesn't have enough testing. Many people, including those who should know better, still aren't taking the virus seriously. And as a result, we are breaking records on our daily case count. What we're seeing now with increased cases doesn't mean increased hospitalizations. That doesn't mean increased deaths. Except hospitalizations have been increasing in step with new cases. Deaths so far have not spiked, but deaths are a lagging indicator of how bad things really are. That's because it takes time between actually being diagnosed with the virus and actually passing away from it. Sometimes it can take on the order of two weeks, and then there's a lag between the death and actually reporting it. So hopefully deaths won't spike, but it's really not going to be surprising if they do. And this doctor telling us confidently that deaths are not going to spike is irresponsible. We're seeing increased cases as expected. This is not a surprise. We shut down the economy, now we opened it up, so people are going about their businesses, back to restaurants, back to retail, back to shopping, and they're gonna get exposed to the virus, and that's okay. Uh, no, it's not okay. And if he's really saying that it's not surprising that people are going about their daily business to bars and restaurants and getting the virus, then yeah, that's not surprising. That's why we advise people not to do that. We want to protect the most vulnerable. The other problem that we've seen is we've had massive protests across the United States and rioting. Thousands and thousands of people in almost every single state, almost all of whom were in close proximity to each other. Many of them were not wearing masks. So of course, a few weeks after these protests, we're going to see a spike in cases. That shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Yes, I think it's safe to say that these mass gatherings definitely contributed cases to the COVID-19 case count. How many? It's hard to say. The problem with the spike in cases is not from restaurants that are all social distancing. Almost all of those restaurants now are requiring masks. The problem is not retail outlets that also require social distancing. The problem was massive groups of people throughout the country not socially distancing, exposing themselves. What do you think going to a bar or restaurant is? That's risk. That's exposure. You can maybe mitigate that by sitting outside, but that's not happening everywhere. The fact that this doctor isn't acknowledging this as a risk factor is really strange. So the average age right now of the new cases that we're seeing is about 31 years old. Those are the folks that have an easy time with this virus. As a matter of fact, it's almost hard to calculate the fatality rate of people that are young that get this virus. I hear people saying this all the time, trying to downplay the virus and say that it's not a big deal. First of all, more young people having it 
puts the vulnerable people at more risk. End of story. Also, we are learning that thousands of people who are young and healthy and get COVID-19 end up with symptoms that last months, and these symptoms can be very debilitating. This group of people is called the long haulers. They're mostly people aged between 30 and 49 who have never been hospitalized with COVID-19, so their cases are considered mild, but months after their diagnosis, they have really debilitating symptoms. So this virus is not just something to write off for young people. We don't know the full extent of how bad it can be for them. A young person has a less than 25 years old, you have a 50 times greater risk of dying from drowning than you do from dying from COVID-19, and a much higher risk of dying from an automobile accident than you do from COVID-19. We're not closing swimming pools. Don't give Governor Newsom any ideas. If you are infected with COVID-19 and you don't take precautions, you are very likely to spread it to at least one other person. That chain of events is what's going to get people killed. This doctor telling young people to not care about the virus, that catching it is no big deal, is going to get people killed. We saw an increase in cases in places like Texas and Florida, uh, and they're saying right now Orange County as well. Yes. Are yes. the hospitals overrun in these places? No, they're not overrun. You know, I, I just, obviously I know my hospital system the best, and that's Hogue Hospital. They're not overrun. But many hospitals are reaching capacity in their ICUs. Texas, Florida, and even California has this problem right now. And the length of hospitalizations for COVID patients is dramatically reduced because we're a lot better at treating this. Yes, that is true, and it is good news. Drugs like steroids have been shown to be very effective in treating COVID-19 patients. But that doesn't mean that we should all just not worry about getting it. In terms of the mass actually like helping stop the virus, what are your thoughts on that? You know, I don't wanna to get too controversial, Oh no, oh no, 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 no. My personal opinion is masks have very little utility in preventing the spread of the virus. Well, it's like what they say. What do you call a doctor who earned all C's in med school? Doctor. Now, obviously I'm not saying that this doctor got all C's. My only point is that even though he has a medical degree, that doesn't excuse him from spouting nonsense, which we haven't even seen the worst of yet. In addition, there's been several studies not for COVID, but for influenza and the common cold, looking at the ability of a mask to prevent infection. The conclusion was, they don't work very well. No, there are plenty of studies and plenty of scientific data showing that masks are effective in preventing the spread of viruses from your face. I wonder if this doctor goes around to his surgical wards and tells his surgeons, hey, you don't need to wear masks because guess what? They're not effective. They're not gonna prevent you from giving your sick patient that you're doing surgery on any viruses at all. Don't worry about it. And by the way, all the links to all the studies that have been flashing across the screen are gonna be in the description below. So you can check them out and see just how embarrassingly wrong this doctor is. Nobody's done studies on COVID yet. Also not true. A study came out of Wuhan showing that masks are effective in preventing pre-symptomatic spread of COVID-19 to other people. Is there data to show that if I am at the grocery store and I see that old woman and I don't have my mask on, that I'm you know, more likely to give it to her? Well, the data shows clearly uh, if you are ill with the virus and you sneeze or cough directly in her face, that's how she's going to get the virus. There's little data to support asymptomatic spreading, meaning that you've got the virus, you have no symptoms, and this, this visual of people walking around crop dusting the population because you have the virus but don't know it just isn't accurate. Again, blatant misinformation. If you come into contact with the virus, it could take a few days for you to actually develop symptoms and get sick. During that time, you are considered pre-symptomatic. You will develop symptoms, but you haven't developed them yet. And that is when it is thought that most people are able to spread the virus before they show symptoms, but they're going about their business as if nothing's wrong. This doctor is lying to you. We've got a virus that isn't much more lethal than a bad influenza outbreak. Except it is. In the US, it's already killed more people than the last three flu seasons combined. And it's still ongoing. In fact, it's far from over. Yes, it's contagious. Yes, there's a lot of people with it, and it has caused a lot of death, no question about it. But we know about 50% of those deaths 
are in susceptible people that are older, nursing homes, and those with significant pre-existing conditions. I never understand why people say this. Does a 70-year-old who has diabetes, who could live another 10, 20 years, and is cut short by COVID, just not matter to you? Coming from a doctor who vowed to serve the suffering, this is embarrassing. And the longer this goes on, the more we're realizing that the young and the healthy are relatively immune to this virus. They do well when they catch it, they recover quickly, and they don't die from this virus. Except they could die from it, they could spread it to someone who is vulnerable, and they might end up with long-lasting, debilitating symptoms. In children, they're so immune that they have a greater risk of influenza than they ever did from COVID-19. Which is why, by the way, I'm advocating open up the schools with almost no restrictions. Open up schools with almost no restrictions. Unbelievable. So right now, it does seem like children under the age of 11 or 12 are not very good at catching or spreading coronavirus. And we don't really know the reasons for that. However, the U.S. is experiencing 60 to 70,000 new cases daily. And health experts are worried that with such widespread cases, going back to school and having children come into many contacts with each other might offset their low odds of catching or spreading it. In fact, in Israel, schools have been ground zero for coronavirus outbreaks. If we do this in America, if we open schools with no precautions, no restrictions, and no solid plan, then we are experimenting with the lives of our children. I don't think we want to do that. What is the, the issue with having your mask on and breathing your own CO2? Isn't that a bad thing to do? You know, we did an experiment in my office. We have fitness trainers in, our, in my office. They're super healthy and very fit. And um, I check their pulse ox, a little oxygenation meter that you put on the finger that measures um, uh, blood oxygenation. At rest, it should be around 98%. And on these two ladies, it was. Then we had them on a treadmill, walking briskly for a couple minutes, recheck their oxygenation in the same ballpark. Then I put a mask. One wore a surgical mask and one wore one of those homemade cloth masks. We had them, again, walk briskly on a treadmill for a few minutes oxygenation uh, meter back on them, both of them had significant drops in their oxygenation. One as low as 79% and the other one was in the mid 80s. As you can see, I have my oximeter right here. It has my oxygen saturation percent on top and my pulse at the bottom. I've been playing around with this and my oxygen saturation with this machine seems to fluctuate from 90 to 100. Now I'm gonna put on my mask, go play with my dog outside, and let's see how my oxygen saturation is after that. And trust me, this is a workout. My puppy is one year old. So I haven't gone outside yet. I've just been sitting at my computer for a few minutes with my mask on trying to get a baseline. And as you can see, my oxygen is still within my normal range. Pretty healthy. Okay, so I just did about five minutes of playing outside with my dog, and I'm pretty out of breath. I'm sweating, but got my clip here. We're gonna put it on and see what my oxygen levels are. I'll give it a minute. Look at that. Not really changed. Still in a healthy range. I'll also just point out that Today it's 91 degrees where I am. So yeah, it's pretty hot where I am and wearing this mask is not very comfortable, but my oxygen levels, they're just fine. Doctor, I don't believe you. And so if you looked at, the, at a visual of the size of a coronavirus versus the size of the filtering ability of a mask, it's like the equivalent of building a uh, chain link fence to try to keep out mosquitoes, that's the size differential. So although the virus can travel in droplets and the masks can somewhat collect those droplets and prevent those droplets from going out, there's still a very imperfect mechanism to try to prevent the virus spread 
And we have studies with influenza and the common cold that, say, that says they just don't work. Again, not true about the studies. Go check those out in the description. And I'm really not even sure why he's bringing up this stupid analogy talking about the size of a viral particle. It is the droplets that you're trying to prevent the spread of with a face mask. Those droplets are the main mode of transmission for the virus, and they are many, many, many times bigger than the viral particle itself. So they absolutely get caught in the mask. Which means technically you're still susceptible, although you're young and I would really wouldn't worry if you caught the virus. But he really should. That young person, if he were to catch it, could end up with debilitating symptoms, could die could spread it to somebody who is vulnerable. It is irresponsible and goes directly against this doctor's oath for him to be spreading this misinformation on PragerU's YouTube channel. And he should really be ashamed of himself. Well, that was fun. I think that's gonna do it for this week's video. If you wanna check out the links to all the sources and the original video, they're in the description. I'm Dr. Wilson, this has been Debunk the Funk. If you enjoyed this video, maybe give it a like and subscribe so that you can join me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.